superhero show like this. You know, a lot of the plot lines go into heavy DC Comics areas, and I'm wondering, as an actor, do you get excited when you see that you're bringing something like that to life, or is it more uh, a little anxiety to get it right? Uh, I think it's both. Yeah, it's like it's like this, <laughs> exciting and exhausting. No, it's 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 really about what's on the page. You know, um, what's in the comic is almost it's not irrelevant, but it's not so much the story that we're telling. There are DNA elements from that. You know, um, <clears throat> but to be honest, a lot of a lot of uh, my work from here on out. I mean, it has become learning about the character in the comics. It has become. What do the fans think of Nightwing? Who do they think he is? What character elements can I steal from? But now it's really about collaborating with Greg Walker and trying to figure out, like, okay, what elements uh, of the character have we not really shown? You know, have, what obstacles and flaws would be best to bring out his strengths, you know, in a season? And this season, you know, Greg and the writers boldly decided to kind of take a, you know, a confident step into the world of horror and the occult and dark magic and supernatural and you know that's something that I don't know a lot about as an actor and I feel like Dick Grayson doesn't know a lot about and so he has to kind of you know kind of jump on his feet and figure out okay how do we solve this complete new set of problems and, and how do we defeat these villains that you know, may not necessarily be defeated with hand-to-hand -hand combat or, you know, the, the psychological things that he's learned. So, yeah, he's just kind of, you know, thrown a, a new set of challenges and, and we have to watch him and the Titans basically collaborate and, and use each other to try and figure out how to beat them. Excellent. All right. Um, all right. How you doing, Brendan? Or Brendan, sorry. Good, uh, mate. So... I have to ask because given the course of the series thus far, and we're in the fourth season, right? We've seen Dick Grayson kind of go from just being like the son that ran away from his dad to being pretty much a father figure. What's it been like kind of seeing that trajectory for Dick Grayson as pretty much a team leader and I guess like paternal father figure for the Titans? I mean, I guess in, in season one, he just wanted to break away from, you know, what he would call abuse, you know, the, that kind of being taught things at a young age that he probably shouldn't have been taught, you know, being exposed to a, a world of crime and, and goings on in Gotham that he was probably too young to, to be exposed to. Um, and I also think that you know, throughout the season, throughout season one, two, and three, he's been dealing with his parents in, you know, the death of his parents in different ways. And I think at the end of, at the, well, during season three, he lands on the right way, which is to try and be that father figure for younger people that need him. You know, to try and to try and be someone be the best person that he can be, but also step up into that patriarchal role for people that have talents that, you know, may have the same PTSD going on, that may have lost their parents, that, um, that may need some, you know, father figure in their lives. And season four kicks off with, you know, almost the exact parallel, which is Connor Kent wants to meet his father and he doesn't get to meet the, the father that he wants to meet. He, he gets the other one. And we all know that he's a villain and he's a villain, a serious villain that Bruce Wayne was a friend of, you know, um, someone not to be, not to treat lightly, and Dick has to try and figure out how to be that father figure to Connor Kent that he doesn't have, and that's a tricky dynamic because you know, on the one hand, he tells Superboy, I, I wouldn't get within ten miles of Lex Luthor, but on the other hand, everyone gets, everyone should get to know their parents, you know. So he's battling with that throughout throughout the season. Yes, uh, congrats on six, four seasons, man. Thanks, man. Uh, so, I mean, uh, Dick Grayson is getting his ass whipped a lot in this show. You got to do a lot of, uh, uh, you know, body damage, emotional damage. Uh, what is as an actor or? As an actor, yeah, <laughs> yeah. for sure. Um, what's, what's something on, uh, um, like, as far as, like, the trains you to go through a lot of those stunt balls and stuff that you do on, on the show? What, what's that story? What's that's something that you, you train to do to get through, like, a lot of the stunt balls? From the training? The beat, yeah, the beat downs you go through. Yeah. The show, yeah. Well, the, the, the training, 
that I did at the beginning of season one set me up for this whole journey. I trained with a guy called Chan Griffin, only for a short time uh, back in Australia. He was actually uh, part of the stunt crew on Aquaman, and they were shooting that where I live. And so I got to go to the Aquaman studio and train with um, those guys. And, and Chan is a Kali expert, you know, he's an amazing martial artist and just a really, really great teacher as well. And he kind of taught me the, the basics that I would need for the show, but taught me the martial art, not, not so much, you know, the show is, it's, it's for film, so instead of doing things quite tight and effectively, it's quite dramatic and big and, you know, obviously the moves are, you know, cinematic and whatever. Um, so that gave me the foundation for what I needed to start the show. And then throughout the show, we landed on a style um, that served us for the last four seasons. You know, my, my stunt double, Mustafa Balut, is such a talented guy, you know. For this kind of character, we would need you know, in the movies or in any other scenario, two, three, maybe four stunt, stunt doubles. If he's so talented, we only need one. <laughs> he should charge four times. <laughs> he should charge four times what he's getting. But um, he can do the flips. You know, he can do the hand-to-hand combat. He's got all the skills um, that I don't have. So he really does, you know, carry that torch. And, and he, he makes, he really is Nightwing. He makes the character uh, look incredible and, and where I fail he succeeds that being said I would I would probably shortcut myself a little bit if I said that I didn't have a natural affinity to the movement and it's getting better every year so every year I just you just get better you know and you do it every day um, for so long you just have like a I don't know like I you just can you learn lines quicker, you can learn choreo quicker, you, you, you learn on the job. Um, this season we have, I think, four or f- I think five. Greg, how many fights we got this season? Big fights. Five? Six? At least, yeah. At least, big right? Fight. Big, five, big, big fights. Yeah, yeah five. Well, I'm not counting the 11-12 fights, which are as well. So, okay. I would say probably so eight or nine. Eight or, eight or nine big fights. So that's, that's a lot of fights. In a movie, you probably wouldn't get the chance to do eight or nine big fights, even in, you know, like an action movie. So there's an opportunity to just hone your skills, get better and better. And yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of it. I mean, I, I, I'm not someone who does my own stunts at all. I love the physical process. I'm, I'm mid-level. I'm okay at it, you know. Um, but I do enjoy it a lot. It's one of the things that I love about this job. Shout out to the stunt team. Yeah. Thank you guys so, team. so much. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you for the time. All right.